Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Arkansas Alive. We're glad you joined us for this special program. Chad Gonzalez is our guest, along with Aaron Bass. Now, Chad's been on here before, and you see his program every week right here on VTM, Pastors Trinity Church in Jonesboro, Arkansas. So all you folks in Jonesboro, Northeast Arkansas, heads up, call somebody, tell them to tune in this broadcast because you're going to see the evidence of the fact that God is working in your backyard, supernatural healings. Aaron Bass was healed of skin disease and food allergies. Our topic today is supernatural healing. You're going to see some videos of people that have been healed by the power of God. Yes, God is still healing today, and He'll heal you if you know how to believe and trust Him. Father, we pray for all those that are watching today. We pray that your healing anointing will go forth over the air into the homes, hospitals, hotel rooms, and heal people that are watching. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Chad, good to have you again. Honor to be here, sir. Appreciate it. And Aaron, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Now, how old are you, Aaron? I'm 20. 20, 20. years old, and you're going to Rama Bible Training Center. Yep. But you had Sorry. a situation in your life that was plaguing you most of your life. Yeah. Food allergies. It affected your skin. Sleep. Um, rashes and uh, all kind. How long had you dealt with these type things? Since I was born, I had um, food allergies and skin disease. And, and then in probably my sophomore junior year it started to get really bad and I became allergic to more foods and then my skin just was always red and it's really bad and I couldn't even sleep some nights because of it because now is uh, uh, Trinity Church in Jonesboro is that your church yeah that's where I've been going for so you you came to a service mm -hmm. to a healing explosion is what they called them and healing explosion and, uh, my brother got healed the night before and that next night he told me some stuff some spiritual stuff I'd been dealing with and then he prayed for me and then I just began from then to understand how uh, about Christ living in me and the power that I had and that I deserved to be healed and that he had he had given me my healing when I received salvation right your healing was included in the redemptive yeah. work of Christ so you were uh, unable to eat or gain, gain weight uh, doctors uh, you were on numerous drugs now, well, from your perspective, Chad, what happened when, when Aaron came to church that night? What was going on? Well, uh, like I said, he said his brother had gotten healed the night before, and I was actually going to go and minister to him that night, and then things just started happening, and we didn't get to him. Yeah. And so <laughs> the next night, made sure we went over to him. And, and I remember I went over to him and laid hands on him and went to pray and just... On the inside, I just had this sense that there, there was something demonic there going on. And so I had everybody, I said, let's just, let's just spend a few moments just praying in the Spirit. And I uh, didn't want to just blurt that out. Yeah. And so we spent, we spent a few minutes just praying. And the more we began to pray in tongues, just the more I knew. And uh, so we took authority over that. And there wasn't no immediate change, you know, right then. And actually, I think if I remember right, when I talked to his dad about a week later, his dad said it had gotten even worse. Yeah. And had to go to the hospital or something. Yeah, went to the um, ER to try. And... But about a month, maybe a month and a half later, you know, I saw him on a Sunday and just didn't even recognize him because the skin was all clear and he put on weight. And now let's talk amazing. about this a minute because there may be there's there's some uh, pictures right there on the screen uh, of the rash and the skin disease, <clears throat> and you can plainly uh, see Aaron today. He has he has none of that. He has no evidence of any skin disease or rash. Now, let's talk about this. You discerned that it was demonic. Now, a lot of people, even pastors, preachers, don't know that some diseases can be inflicted and put upon people with uh, demon spirits. Now, that, that scares a lot of people, but mm -hmm. the demon spirits are real. Right. And uh, the Bible talked about spirits of infirmity. And that's probably what you were dealing with with, uh, with Aaron. And you discerned that. Wisely, you didn't just blurt it out and scare everybody, but you prayed it through, and you rebuked that spirit. You, now, I want you to listen to what he said. He said, we took authority over it. 
what does that mean? Because a lot of Christians, unfortunately, even preachers, don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. So explain to them what it means to take authority over a demon spirit that's causing a disease. Well, you know, it's just like your dog. If your dog starts getting in the trash, you know, uh, I have authority over that dog, and so I tell that dog to stop, you know, and get out and, and obey. And, you know, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says that, uh, that God, He raised us up with Christ, he made us to sit down at His own right hand in Christ, and, and we see that Christ, you know, was the head over all principality and power, and all authority there, and because of our union with that, we've got the same authority. Yeah. And so in that situation, just discern that there was some demonic you know, oppression there, you know, not possessed with well, the devil, he's saved, well, but you know, oppression there causing that. And, uh, and because we have authority and they have to do what we tell them to do, yeah. we told it to, you know, whatever that was, to, to cease in their operation and maneuvers there and just told it to stop and yeah. it has to obey. And, and the reason you have authority to do that is because Jesus gave you the authority to use his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, uh, among many healings that have taken place over the summer, you spoke at the uh, Rama East Africa Conference in May. Uh, the blind and the deaf were healed. You spoke in Seoul, South Korea in July. Also blind and deaf healed among hundreds of others. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so in May, uh, Rama they had the, their first annual East Africa Faith Conference in Nairobi. And they've got a, a, a campus opening in Nairobi, Kenya. And so we were there. And, and I remember one of the nights we had a lady, she came up and she said, uh, she said, I'm losing my sight. So I can barely see. And she said, I'm losing my hearing. And we laid hands on her. Her sight immediately returned. Mm -hmm. And uh, her, her, healing, her hearing came all back. And then there was, when that happened, then you know, that causes faith to rise up in others. So yeah. another lady came up. She was deaf. She got instantly healed. Uh, we had a young man that was, uh, he was nearsighted, glasses. He was instantly healed. It's just, it makes Christianity fun. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what Christianity is all about. Yeah. Now, uh, we have some videos. Uh, that, would you like to set these up and tell us what we're going to see of a blind woman healed? Uh, that was while you were in... Uh, that was Seoul, Seoul. Yeah, Seoul, South Korea. Okay. Yeah, they're in Seoul. Uh, they were having uh, their Word of Faith uh, conference there in Seoul. And so they had about 800 people in attendance. And this one lady came up, an elderly woman, and I said, what can we do for you? And she said, well, I can't see. And so we laid hands on her, and, and she was instantly healed. And so we brought her up on the stage and told her about it, and we just rejoiced. Whew, hallelujah. Okay, here's the video. Watch this, and we'll be right back. She couldn't see. In the morning, I tried to check how many things I she said she couldn't see. to see those uh, those healings and demonstrations of the spirit and power. Now, there were a couple of more. There's a video testimony of uh, someone healed of arthritis, uh, and that was in Ridgely, Tennessee. Yeah, we've been the last, uh, well, all the Sunday nights here in August, uh, we've been going up to Ridgely, Tennessee and doing healing school. And uh, one of the nights there was a young man that he'd been dealing with uh, arthritis and a lot of pain in, in his hip and in his back and he had been getting shots for that and nothing was helping and, and so that night he'd come to service and we told everybody, you know, things were happening. I said, check it out. And um, he checked some things out and anyway, by the end of the service, instantly healed and it just, you can see in the video, man, it's just, it'll bring a few tears here. It touched, touched me. Okay, get ready. We're gonna watch this testimony of arthritis being healed. We'll be right back. Last September, uh, I went 
uh, got diagnosed with arthritis in my left hip. Uh, the surgeon said that we did the x-rays, the MRIs, and all of that stuff, and they said that there's been a, a cyst to form in that hip. Mm -hmm. And this, this is Sunday, uh, this, just this past Friday, two days ago, um, I went to the surgeon and he gave me a cortisone shot and it, it had no effect. And I could barely walk when I came. And after the service tonight, yeah. yeah. Uh, and when you had you asked for testimonies and stuff, and you said you asked for everybody to check yourself, that kept standing and that kept hurting. And then, when it was all over with, I stood up and I saw a guy that I used to know, or I know him, and I walked over to him, and there was. No pain. I'm, I'm healed. Because my righteousness is his righteousness. Right. Praise God. And you know, uh, Chad and Aaron, I think sometimes people are looking for the spectacular. Mm. And really, the supernatural is not always spectacular. But, you know, he went over to talk to somebody, and it was gone. The lepers went to show themselves to the priest, and it was gone. Oh. Aaron, how about that? Yeah. That's what happened to you, wasn't it? That's exactly what happened. Now, you, had, you also had food allergies. Yeah. I would, I became, I went to an allergy specialist or whatever, and they told me that I was allergic to soy and milk, so I had to cut all that out, and all I was eating was pretty much chicken and vegetables, and that was my whole diet, and then as this has progressed, I've seen more of my healing as I go. Um, I can eat soy any time now. Um, I've been able to drink milk, have cereal with milk in it, and I just... It's a lot better with milk, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's much better with milk. <laughs> yeah. And the, no more skin rash? No. No more no. allergies? And who did that for you? God. Jesus. Absolutely. Jesus, yes. Hallelujah. Uh, you're going to go to Rama? Yeah. Uh, now, for those of you that don't know, Rama uh, Bible Training Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a Bible college that was started by Kenneth E. Hagan, Sr. And uh, uh, you graduated from Rama too, yes, Chad. Sir. Yes. So, you know, these are, these are schools that are training people, um, you know, to flow in the gifts and so forth. Uh, Aaron, tell us about the emotional healing that came with your physical healing. Well, I know I'd been kind of depression and all that kind of stuff came with, no, not, I wasn't able to go see my friends or because of the pain and stuff that came with the eczema. And, you know, as I began to see my healing come, I saw, I mean, just joy and peace in my house and in my family and seen restoration in my family and relationships there. And, man, God's just been going you know, just healing all over in my family. And I, you know, that's what's inspired me to go to Raymond because I want to learn more about him and more about the Word yeah. and be able to understand him better. What, what about your friends now that have seen you um, healed? How, how's, how's their response? Actually, I hadn't talked to them really. I hadn't communicated with them at all. And then over this past week, I went yesterday and the day before, I talked to some of them and my one friend hadn't been to church really at all. And he's like, well, I just really want to understand salvation before I get saved. And, you know, <laughs> so it, it's been really awesome to see. And they're like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll come to church with you and see see what this is all about. If, you know, this is happening in your family and in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, we've got one more video testimony that we want to show you. And then I'm going to have Chad uh, talk about the scriptures that he shares. And uh, then I'm going to ask him if he would pray for you wherever you are, wherever you're watching. So if you need healing uh, of anything, get ready uh, because we're going to pray for you before the, the program is over. Uh, Chad, this last one is a healing uh, of a leg growing out. Mm. 
very demonstrative, very visible, very profound. So tell us about this before we watch the video. Well, I like these because this is different than, you know, somebody said, well, my stomach's hurting or something yeah. like that. You know, people can say, well, you're faking it. When you see something short growing out, that's totally different. And this lady, she was, she was uh, born with hip dysplasia, born with a short leg. They tried to surgically fix it and uh, were unsuccessful with that. And so you'll see in this video, she had to wear these massive uh, braces, metal and leather straps, mm. just to be able to walk. And uh, we brought her up and she was instantly healed. That thing grew out in front of everybody. Absolutely amazing. Now, this is also in Ridgely, Tennessee. So watch this and then come back so we can talk about the scriptures and have Chad pray for you. Watch this. Um, my name is Jeannie Davis. Um, I was born with um, hip dysplasia. I had one leg longer than the other. Um, when I was 50 years old, I got a new hip and they asked if I could have my, if I wanted my legs even at um, Dartmouth. And um, I said, sure, we wouldn't want their legs even. So um, I didn't know about Jesus in me. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I had the operation and they were even. I moved to Tennessee and I was in Tennessee when I hurt my shoulder mm -hmm. and um, the physical therapist said, um, you're lumping. And I said, I'm not lumping. I just had my legs even. Yeah. And she said, well, it's growing again. So um, that's how I ended up with one leg longer than the other. So you came into church tonight with those on. Right. So let's see those shoes. Let's see the These, difference in the shoes. Yep. There's the difference between them. These are made by Grace Company in Dyersburg. Okay. And they were prescription. Yeah. So and what happened? What happened tonight? Yeah. Well, um, I just, uh, I guess I concentrated on Jesus and me, and, um... And your leg just, grew out. My leg grew. I <laughs> didn't even know it could do that. Yeah. So, um... And all the pain went away in your back? Yeah, my pain, in, well, first I noticed my arthritis in my hands, and that no longer seemed to be an issue. Uh -huh. And uh, then I realized I didn't have any arthritis in anything. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Miracles do happen. Yes, ma'am. You'll remember, notice that she said, I just focused on Jesus yes. in me. Yes. Now, that's the key, and that's what you've been stressing. Yeah. Now, there's three scriptures here. We want to look at each one of them. Okay. Because you, you really just focus on the in Christ scriptures. That's all we've been teaching. Um, you know, typically when people are teaching on healing, you know, we're looking at the woman with the issue of blood and the centurion servant and all those, those pieces of it. Um, but what I started finding, and there's nothing wrong with it by any means, but basically we're just kind of going at it from another side of the mountain. Right. And so we've really been just focusing on these in Christ realities, who you are in Christ, what happened when Christ got in you. And, and what I found is, is that by teaching it from that standpoint, uh, it's getting our eyes off of our faith and our this and our that. And it's just simply getting it back on Jesus. Right. You know, I mean, the classic story, Peter walking on the water. Yeah. You know, the, the supernatural is happening as his eyes are on Jesus. But as soon as he looked at the storm, well, you could look at the sickness as the That's storm. That's right. Or the disease as the storm. Um, or even your faith, you know, as these, these things. And then when you do that, all of a sudden you get into work mode. And that's what we found is happening with a lot of charismatic faith people we're starting to kind of get well, we've been kind of in a work mode and calling it faith because we're so focused on our confession and and our bible reading and devotions and serving and and then we're wondering okay god i've done everything i'm supposed to do pay up why aren't you paying up that's a good point chad now i, I want to make sure people understand what he and you can correct me if i'm wrong what he's not saying is that you don't have anything to do that you don't have a part. Your faith, your, your, your faith is your belief. It's your trust in Jesus. That's your part. Right. You, you've got to believe. Uh, but I, I underline this. We become so intellectual when it comes to the Word. We're trying to base our faith on our works. And the Bible says faith and works. Works is not doing things, keeping rules, regulations, and, you know, but, but your works is believing God 
right. that what his word <clears throat> says is true and acting on it. You could yes, say sir. it's it's action, corresponding action. Yes, sir. But what we've left out, and this is the important part, the fellowship with the Father and our position in Christ, that's where the provision flows mm -hmm. from. Our provision flows from the position right. that we've been giving. And that's what we've been talking a lot about is that, you know, we've, from where I see it, we've watered down salvation so much to even where salvation is just about going to heaven. Yeah. And, and certainly uh, a part of that was to change our destination, but ultimately it's about changing our position. That's true. You know, uh, but be becoming right with God and becoming one with Christ. And, and that, that was Jesus' crowning achievement was uniting God and man yes, sir. back together once again. Well, your scriptures are Colossians 2.20. Yes, sir. Okay, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. But it's not me, it's Christ living in me. Mm -hmm. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I have faith in Him, Yes. but I also have His faith. Right. I have the faith of the Son of God. So it's impossible for me to have a faith failure when I'm using His faith. Yeah, God's faith doesn't fail. Yeah. Your faith does. Yeah. But God's faith doesn't. Yeah. And He has a gift of faith that He can impart to you as one right. of the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Okay, and the next one is Colossians 2, uh, verse 6. And yes, I love this one. Yeah. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Yeah, like this one right here. We, we've been majoring on this one for a while. That I kind of look at this one as kind of a, a two-parter in that, you know, if you've received, if you're saved, you received Jesus as Lord, well, you did part one. Yeah. Well, then part two is now now walk in Him. You know, in Him we have our, our, our being. We, we move in Him and have our being in Him and live in Him. And that's where you start seeing the results is when you start living through your union with Christ and now that life that He is that begins to just flow out of your spirit and your body. And that's where, as we're teaching on these things, miracles just start taking place in the service. And we're not laying hands like the lady that had the short leg. Yeah. Didn't lay hands on her. You know, we, we just spoke to it. The things started going out. The man with the arthritis and stuff, we didn't, we didn't pray for him, didn't minister to him. That happened with him just sitting in his chair. Yeah. We're teaching on your union. You know, Chad, I think a, lo a lot of times we make a mistake. I've seen ministers to do this and, and individuals to do this. Oh, Lord, won't you please heal me? Yeah. Well, he's already healed you. Yeah. We've been saying this, that, you know, before, before Christ, healing was a promise. Now it's a reality. Yeah. By his stripes. Yeah, I'm not trying to get God to do anything because when he moved in me, he brought all of his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, he didn't move that's, in empty-handed. He brought the U-Haul. That's, that's good. And he brought you, it all his You're stuff. not trying to get him to do something that he's already done. Boy, don't you know God's excited when his children come to him and say, Thank you, Father, yeah. that healing belongs to us now. Lay down your crutches. Get out of your wheelchairs. You remember John McMillan who wrote the first book, The Authority of the mm -hmm. Believer, that Brother Hagin said he read. Yeah. That's where he got his his information. And then, of course, he wrote one, Authority of the Believer. And in that book, he said, when you're seated with Christ in your heavenly position, this is all your identity with Christ, when you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, stay there. Stay seated in Him. Mm -hmm. Don't come down and, and get in some kind of earthly struggle. I'm talking about spiritually. Stay seated with Him in Christ. Now, now, listen very carefully. Resist the devil. Ignore the devil. I hesitate to use that word because people misunderstand it. Ignore the devil and go on about your assignment from God. We, we spend too many times, too much time fighting the devil. Well, you, what you discerned was that there was a demon spirit involved in Aaron's uh, healing. So you just took authority of it. Yeah, it wasn't to be a fight. No. Fight's already taken place. Yeah. Jesus won the fight. Yeah, so we're just walking in the victory. And you just walk in the yeah. victory. That's good. Are you all getting this? It's good, it's good stuff. Okay, yeah. one more. First, well, verse 10 uh, in Colossians 2 says, And oh, you yeah, are complete good, yeah. in Him. Yeah. 
So I like that. Which is the head of all principality and power. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So if it was just that, it'd be, oh, well, pr praise Jesus. He's amazing. But then he includes us in that. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and you. Yeah. You know? And then 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. Yeah, not when we die yeah. here. Now, I've been saying this. I say it for shock value, uh, but there's, there's so much truth in it. And that when you begin to understand your union with Christ, in one sense, there's nothing different about you and Jesus except for your natural body. You're, you're, you're you have the body. same spirit of faith. You're not the son, but you're a son. Right. And you have every inheritance, every privilege that he gave you yeah. to use his name. I want yeah. you to pray for our viewers, Chad. Um, there may be some people out there saying, man, I wish I could be healed or I, I want to know more about this. Well, first of all, if you live in Jonesboro or in Northeast Arkansas, go to Trinity Church and listen to, to the man. Listen to him preach. Hear the word. But go ahead. We have just less than two minutes here for you to pray for people. Okay. You? Yeah. So if you're watching today and you are a Christian, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I just want to make you aware of the, of the power of God that's on the inside of your spirit right now. And I want to make you aware of it. And, and I just pray this, Father, open their eyes and help them to understand and enlighten them. Help them understand the life of God, that healing power that's already in their spirit right now. And, and, and the, as you become aware of that, it'll just begin to flow out of your spirit and your body. And it'll almost be a natural thing to happen for you uh, as a spirit being. If you haven't accepted Jesus, hey, you know what? Jesus still loves you and he wants to prove himself to you. And so right now, I, I just speak to that disease, the sickness, the pain, whatever is going on in your body right now. We take authority over that and we command that to be uh, gone and you be healed from the top of your head and the soles of your feet right now. In the name of Jesus. And we just love to hear the testimonies. Write in, call, let Amen. us know. Uh, you can watch Pastor, uh, Pastor Chad and Lacey Gonzalez, his wife, on Winning in Life right here on VTN. Mondays at 6.30 p.m. and Fridays at 2 a.m. So watch the program. Go to Trinity Church, 701 East Highland Drive, Jonesboro, 72401. Phone number is 870-935-7705. The website is trinityjonesboro.com. Come. Thank you, Chad, for coming and being a part. Thank you, sir. And thank you, thank Aaron, you. for sharing your testimony. Thank you. You enjoy you enjoying life now more. Definitely. Okay. Definitely peace. Enjoy. God bless you. Hope you have a great time at Raymond. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Arkansas Alive. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.